Good afternoon, everybody. Hey, this one is about making a clever, I won't say clever, but a, a fairly obvious substitution that where all the work is done algebraically before you actually begin substituting numbers back into the expression to find out what the result is. Now, we're given this massively large difference of two cubes right here. This, this is 1,141,327 cubed. Okay, but the, the key factor that just screams for a substitution right here is notice that this number right here without the cube is just two less. 1,141,325 is two less than this number right here, not, not counting the cube. Now we're asked to evaluate, that means we're supposed to find a numerical expression for the quantity of the square root of y minus two over six. So again, this substitution just kind of cries out. Uh, we're gonna let A be this, and we'll do all the algebraic manipulations in the variable A, which is a much simpler. And then only after we've isolated for, for uh, this guy right here will we actually be able to, and it turns out to be a very trivial result if you just let the algebra do the work versus the arithmetic. So in a word, this is substitution uh, with minimal arithmetic. Now, the, the big result that we're using right here is what does it mean to expand uh, an expression like this? We'll just use the letters, I guess if they make any difference here, uh, A uh, plus B, let's say. Okay, A plus B uh, quantity cubed. Now this is a, a special case of the binomial theorem, but what we get, and again, you can multiply this out or you can just memorize the pattern that happens over and over. It's called Pascal's triangle. We certainly are gonna get A cubed here. And then we'll get plus uh, 3A squared. And again, this could be done manually, but it's, it's rather tedious. And so there's a, there's a standard pattern here that's referred to as the binomial uh, theorem. It results, you can get do it via combinations, or a lot of people just call it Pas Pascal's triangle. Okay, uh, three A B squared. Plus a B cubed. Right. Now notice that's a common characteristic. There's four terms here. There's four terms. This is three, but you actually have four terms when you when you expand this out. And there's a nice easy, it's a nice pattern here. But in any event, uh, that's exactly what happened right here. We we let A equal to the smaller number, right? And then this long looking expression that would be hard to handle, you know, if you just if you kept the numbers involved, becomes a plus two cubed minus a cubed. And that's exactly the form right here. You see this, this cube right here is two larger than this cube right here. Two larger is not counting the cube. Okay, now, but what does happen here is, and on this step, there's an a cubed in this expression. This a cubed will cancel with this a cubed as far as, the far, as, far as this expression goes. The a cubed in this expansion will cancel with this a cubed and you can just see this. These are the terms that are left. This term, this term, and this term right here. This term, this term, and this term correspond exactly to this term, this term, and this term. It's just that B is equal to uh, two in this kit in this case. B, uh, the B variable is actually equal to two. B is equal to two. So right here you would have. Uh, Two cubed, for example. Okay, and so again, that's where all of this comes from. And then when you simplify this, you get this expression: six a squared plus twelve a plus eight. Okay, this would be three times four right here. That gives you a twelve right there. And of course, two cubed is eight. But remember, we gave it a name. We called it y, right? We called it y. And so what we get is we set y equal to that expression, and uh, the first step that involves actually looking at what we're trying to evaluate is to subtract two from both sides, right? If you subtract two, if you subtract two from this side and then two from this side, you end up with this expression here, uh, two from eight. If you take two away from eight, you actually get six here. Now notice this, this problem, I guess, was kind of designed to work because when you factor the six out, when you factor the six out and divide by six, 
you get y minus two is equal to all of this, okay? But isn't that nice though, that this is a perfect square binomial. And so you get the square root of y minus two over six is equal to a plus one. That's just the properties, the relationship between the square root and the squaring function, they're inverses of each other. And so this is the only time we have to do any calculations. The square root of y minus two over six is equal to a plus one, but all the way back in the beginning, we said a is equal to this value. And so this is the final answer right here. And again, y'all, power of substitution. There's a problem similar to this on the pre-math channel where a lot of, some people try to just start, they tried to use the numbers all the way through without just exploiting the nice cancellation and simplification that you can do before you uh, make the substitution. So again, you don't see any numbers in here, so to speak. This just this is an initial substitution. Do all the algebraic simplification, and the answer pops out. Let me know what you think.